Hello students, welcome to this video on adding and subtracting fractions. So the first rule that you always have to keep in mind when you are adding or subtracting fractions is you must have common denominators. So whether you are adding two fractions or three or five, it doesn't matter. They all have to have the same denominator. Okay, let's begin. Let's look at uh, example one in adding fractions. Now, it's always handy to have a calculator uh, with you, okay? All right, so let's look at the first question. Three eighths plus one eighth. Well, the great thing about this question is that both fractions have the same denominator. This is called a common denominator. So when we have that situation, it's a very basic question to answer. All right, so for the answer, the denominator will stay the same. If the first fraction's denominator was 8 and the second fraction's denominator was 8, the answer is going to have a denominator of 8. Then when we have a common denominator, we simply add, we simply use the operation for the numer numerators. 3 plus 4, 3 plus 1, sorry, is 4. Now, don't be satisfied with this answer. You always have to ask yourself with a final answer, is this in its lowest terms? So we see we have a fraction of 4 over 8. They are both even numbers, so you know that there is a number that can divide both into the top and the bottom, and that number is 2. Okay, so I'm just writing out my steps here. Please show your steps. So if we divide the numerator by 2, 4 divided by 2 is 2. And if we divide the denominator, 8 divided by 2 is 4. Now, just because you've taken it one step uh, further, or one step uh, into lowest terms, into lower terms, you always have to, again, ask yourself, is this in lowest terms? Well, we have a, an even number and an even number on the top and the bottom. So we know that it can also be divided by 2 again. Okay, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 4 divided by 2 is 2. Now we know that when we have a numerator of 1, it's always going to be in lowest terms. Now, you might be thinking, well, I had a different strategy when I got my initial answer here, 4 divided, 4 over 8. Some people recognize that the number 4 goes in evenly into both the numerator and the denominator. Now, the advantage of recognizing this is that when we reduce the fraction, we only need one step. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 8 divided by 4 is 2. You'll notice these two answers are the same. Okay? And that's what we want because the answer doesn't change. It's just we're reducing the fraction. Okay? So whether you use this method where you reduce twice or this method where you reduced only once, it doesn't matter. Okay, so that's the easiest type of question where the denominator was the same. Okay, all right, let's go on to example two or question two. The question is five thirds plus four fifths. So if we were discussing this question, I would probably ask you, what do you notice about this question? Well, hopefully the first thing you notice is that the denominators are different. Okay, so that's one thing I hope you noticed. The second thing I hope you noticed is that the first fraction, 5 thirds, is an improper fraction. We have a numerator that's greater than the denominator. Now, that's not really going to affect how we go about answering this question. It's just something I wanted you to kind of notice. All right, so 5 5 and 3 are our denominators. So what we need to do is to find a common denominator. Now the easiest way to find a common denominator is we simply multiply the two numbers, the two denominators together. So 5 times 3 or 3 times 5 is 15. So we can use 15 as our common denominator. The other way we can do it is we can write a list of multiples like this, right? And we could go 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. And then we can write a list of multiples for 5, 5, 10, 15. And then what we're looking for is we're looking for a common number 
that appears in both lists. That's essentially how we find a common denominator. Okay, so ju we're just reviewing some strategies on how to get that common denominator. Okay, so once we've decided on the common denominator, what we have to do is we have to set up two equivalent fractions. So the first fraction, remember, is 5 thirds. So I'll just put a little mark here. One, that's the first fraction. And we're trying to make that into a fraction that has a denominator of 15. And then the second fraction, we've also got to do the same thing. So I'll just mark it up here. So 4 fifths equals something over 15. Okay, so how do we find these missing denominators? All right, so what you have to do is you have to look at the denominators. What did we do to 3 to make it 15? Well, we multiplied it by 5. Remember, we multiplied it by the other denominator. So what we do to the denominator, we have to do to the numerator. So I'm just writing out all my steps here. So the numerator is going to be 5 times 5, which is 25. Everybody okay with that? Okay, let's go over to the second fraction. It was 4 fifths. Let's look at the denominator. What did we do, what did we do to the denominator 5 to make it into 15? Well, we multiplied by 3. So if we multiply the denominator by 3, then we have to multiply the numerator by 3. So we get here 4 times 3. Now, it's always helpful to write this step. That way, it, there's less chance that you're going to make a mistake on the multiplication. All right, 4 times 3 is 12. Okay, so now we've got our two new fractions. Well, they're not new fractions. They're just equivalent fractions. So let's rewrite this question. 5 thirds is actually 25 fifteenths, okay, plus 4 fifths is actually an equivalent fraction of 12 fifteenths, okay, what you'll notice, we have common denominators, okay, that's what we have to have when we're working on addition or subtraction, okay, so now that we have the common denominators, we know that the answer will have the denominator of 15. Now, let's just do some mental math here, or you can use your calculator. What is 25 plus 12? Well, 25 plus 12 is 37. Now, I could check it over here. I can verify 25 plus 12 equals 37. Okay, so here is our answer, 37 fifteenths. Now, We've learned that whenever we see a fraction, we cannot leave it as an improper fraction. Okay? There's a reason why it's called an improper fraction. So there's a lot of steps involved in these questions, but a lot of steps that we already know. So if we were to do some long division here, 15 goes into 37 how many times? Well, 15 times 1 is 15. 15 times 2 is 30. 15 times 3 is 45. So I think it goes 2 times. 2 times 15 is 30. And we're left with a remainder of 7. All right. So remember, converting an improper fraction to a mixed number. This is the whole number here, 2. The numerator is the remainder of 7. And the denominator doesn't change. It's 15. So a lot of steps to get this answer. 5 thirds plus 4 fifths equals 2 and 7 fifteenths. Okay? All right. Let's look at number 3. Now, for all of these questions, I'm showing you kind of different variations here. All right. So, number 3, we have 2 and 3 quarters plus 4 and 5 six. What do you notice that's different about this question? Well, hopefully you notice that we have two mixed numbers that are being added together. So there's a couple strategies you can go about uh, using to solve this problem. First, you can convert the mixed numbers into improper fractions and then find the uh, common denominator. Or you can leave it as mixed numbers and deal with the whole number separately. So this is what I mean. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is 
I want to just focus on the fractions. So 3 quarters and 5 sixths. So let's just focus on those two fractions first. We're going to ignore the whole number of 2 and 4. All right. So we have a denominator of 4 and we have a denominator of 6. So if I multiply those two together, 4 times 6 equals 24. But we can use the denominator of 24, but it's always easier to use a smaller number for a denominator. So what if I were to, to divide 24 by 2 and get 12? Now I have to ask myself, does 4 divide evenly into 12? Yes, it does. Does 6 divide evenly into 12? Yes, it does. So here's a, a case where writing a multiples list really would be helpful. So multiples of 4 are 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. Multiples of 6 are 6, 12, 18, and 24. Now, our original common uh, denominator was going to be 24. But if I look at my list here, I can see that there's a smaller number that's, gonna, that's common to both lists, and that's 12. So let's use 12 as our common denominator. Okay, so let's set up our two equivalent fractions. So the first fraction was 3 quarters. Notice how I'm doing all my rough work kind of underneath the question. So 3 quarters equals something over 12. We agreed that we were going to use 12 as the common denominator. So that's the first fraction. And then the second fraction is 5 6. So let's set up that uh, equivalent fraction over here. Okay, so do you remember these steps? So let's look at the denominators. What did we have to do to 4 to make it into 12? Well, we had to multiply it by 3. So what we do to the denominator, we have to do to the numerator. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 is going to be our new numerator for this fraction. Let's go to our second fraction. I forgot to label the second fraction here. This is the second fraction. Okay, so let's look at the denominators. What did we do to 6? What did we multiply 6 by to make it 12? Well, we multiplied it by 2. So let's do the same for the numerator. 5 times 2 is 10. Okay, so we have our two new equivalent fractions. All right, so let's rewrite this question here. So what we're going to do is we're going to just ignore the whole numbers for now. Okay, actually, let's not. Let's write them in. So our first fraction is 2 and 9 twelfths plus, and then we have a whole number of 4 here, and 10 twelfths. Okay, all right. So I'm going to focus on the fractions only. So let's add these fractions together. Okay, so we're going to get, uh, let's go down here. So 9 plus 10 is 19. And of course, our denominator is 12. Okay, so again, which happens a lot when we're adding fractions, is we're left with an improper fraction. So let's do a little bit of rough work down here. 12 goes into 19. This shouldn't be too hard. 12 goes into 19 one time. And we have a remainder of 7 again. All right. So this fraction actually equals 1 and 7 twelfths. But don't forget that we kind of said that we were going to ignore the whole numbers for now. Well, now is where we put them back in. So 2 plus 4 is 6 plus 1. 2 plus 4 plus 1 is 7. So now we have a final answer of 7 and 7 twelfths. Okay? 
So you remember for these type of questions, I eliminated the whole number and then I added them at the very end. Now, if you had converted both fractions to improper fractions, you're definitely going to end up with the same answer. All right, let's look at example four. So again, something different. All right, so we have in this case three fractions, no mixed numbers, no improper fractions, just three different fractions. So the secret to this question is we need to find a common denominator for all three of these fractions. Common denominator for a denominator of two, three, and four. So easiest way to do it, multiply all the denominators together. Two times three is six. Six times four is 24. But I'm wondering if we can do the same thing we did in the previous question. I wonder if there's a denominator that's smaller than 24 that will work. So let's divide this by 2. Uh, 2 equals 12. So let's see. Does 2 uh, divide evenly into 12? Yes. Does 3 divide evenly into 12? Yes. Does 4 divide evenly into 12? Yes. So let's use 12 as our common denominator. So we've got three fractions we need to set up. First fraction is one-half, one-half, and then we've decided we're going to use the common denominator of 12. Second fraction, two-thirds, common denominator, 12. And the third fraction, three-quarters, common denominator, 12. <clears throat> All right, so why don't you press pause here and see if you can come up with those three equivalent fractions showing all your steps. When you've got the three equivalent fractions, then press play again, okay? All right, press pause here. All right, hopefully you got those three equivalent fractions. So I ended up with six twelfths, eight twelfths, and nine twelfths. So I've written them up here in my addition statement. Six twelfths plus eight twelfths plus 9 twelfths. So hopefully you got the same thing. Okay, so once we get it to this step, it's pretty straightforward. Our denominator is 12. Okay, that's something we don't even have to think about. And then let's do some mental math here. 6 plus 8 is 14. 14 plus 9, you can check it on your calculator here. So I'm just going to start from the beginning. If it's 6 plus 8 plus 9 equals 23. So I got 23 as my numerator. 23 over 12, an improper fraction. So let's do our long multiplication here. 12 into 23. It almost goes two times, but it only goes once. Okay? And then we get a remainder of 11. Remainder of 11. Okay? So 23 over 12 is a whole number of 1 and a remainder of 11 over 12. So that's my final answer. Okay, so we looked at four different variations of adding fractions questions. So when we look at subtracting fractions, we're going to use the exact same techniques, the same skills, the same set, uh, steps, except our final operation is going to be subtraction. Okay? All right, let's go on to section B. All right, so question one. Notice, first thing, we have the same denominator of 10. So when we have a question that has already common denominators, it's a lot less work. So our denominator is going to be 10. So let's look at the numerator. 12 subtract 6. 12 subtract 6 is... 6. Okay? Now ask yourself, is this in its lowest form? 6 over 10. Well, both numbers are even numbers, so we know that it's not in its lowest term. Okay? All right. So if we divide the numerator by 2, we get 3. If we divide the denominator by 2, we get 5. So we're left with a final answer of 3 fifths. Is this in its lowest terms? Yes, it is. Okay, let's go on to number two. Seven-ninths subtract two-fourths. 
Now, 2 4 some of you are recognizing right away, this fraction is not in its lowest terms, and these fractions were not in its lowest terms. But we don't really have to uh, do anything about that until we write our answer. Okay, so we need to find common denominator. Okay, so common denominator of 9 and 4, we multiply them together. 9 times 4 is 36. Okay? Now, we can try to divide this by 2. 36 divided by 2 is 18. Well, 18 is divisible by 9, but 18 is not divisible by 4, so that's not going to work. So we're going to use 36 as our common denominator. Okay, so fraction 1. 7 ninths equals what over 36? And then fraction 2, 2 fourths equals what over 36? Okay, so we've gone through this a number of times. So I want you to press pause here, and I want you to calculate the new equivalent fractions and then rewrite, restate the problem up here. Okay, so press pause at this point. Okay, so hopefully you got the two equivalent fractions. I got 28 over 36, and then I got 18 over 36. So I rewrote the statement, the subtraction statement up here. Hopefully you got the same thing. Okay, so the denominator stays the same. That's why we work so hard to get a common denominator. And then let's just simply subtract the numerators. 28 subtract 18 is 10. Okay, so 10 and 36 are even numbers. So this is not in its lowest form, is it? So if they're both even numbers, best place to start, divide the top and the bottom by 2. Okay, all right, 10 divided by 2 is 5, new numerator. 36 divided by 2 is 18. Are there any numbers that divide evenly into 5 and 18? No. So this is our final answer. Okay. Let's go on to number three. We have an improper fraction, 21 over 2. Subtract a mixed number of 3 and 3 fifths. Okay. So for this type of question, we have to convert this to an improper fraction. It's much easier to subtract if both fractions are kind of the same form. They're both improper fractions or they're both um, mixed numbers. So 3 and 3 fifths, remember how to do this? We multiply the whole number 3 times the denominator. 3 times 5 is 15 and then we add the numerator. So 15 plus 3 is 18 over 5. So this is the fraction we're working with. So this question is actually 21 over 2 subtract 18 over 5. Okay, so we have a denominator of 5 and the denominator of 2. So 2 times 5, this should be pretty easy, is 10. Okay, so denominator of 10 is usually a pretty, uh, pretty sweet deal. Okay, so let's set up our two fractions. 21 over 2 equals something over 10. And our second fraction is 18 fifths equals something over 10. Okay, so I want you to press pause at this point and come up with these two new equivalent fractions and rewrite the subtraction question up here. Okay, press pause now. Okay, we're back. So I got these two new equivalent fractions. 105 tenths subtract 36 tenths. Did you get the same thing? All right, so when we have the common denominator, we know our denominator is going to be 10. And then let's use our calculator over here. Let's find out the new numerator. So that's 105 subtract 36 equals, and I got 69 over 10. Okay, improper fraction, right? So you know what to do. Just show your work down here. Let's see our long division. 10 goes into 69 six times. It doesn't go into 7 because 7 times 10 is 70. So 6 times, we get 60, and then we get a remainder of 9. Okay? So this fraction, 69 over 10, is actually 6. And 
remainder of 9 tenths. We look at our fraction, is 9 tenths in its lowest form? Yes, it is. So this is the answer, 6 and 9 tenths. Okay. So number 4. Number 4 is different from number 3 and that we have a mixed number subtract another mixed number. So let's use a different technique that we used in our addition uh, portion of this lesson. So let's only focus on the fractions. We have 7 twelfths and 1 third. Now the cool thing about these two denominators is that yes we can multiply them together to get a common denominator but sometimes one of the denominators is actually a multiple of the other. So let me show you the multiple list here. Multiple list of 3 is 3, 6, 9, 12. Multiple list of 12 is 12, 24. So in this case, common denominator is actually one of the denominators. So let's use 12 as our common denominator. Well, if 12 is our common denominator, then we don't have to do anything to this fraction. We only have to change fraction 2. So fraction 2 is 1 third equals something over 12. Okay? All right, so what did we have to do? To 3 to make it 12, we multiplied it by 4. Okay, we get a new uh, numerator of 4 twelfths. All right, let's rewrite our question here. So we have 11 and 7 twelfths. Subtract 3 and, what was our new fraction? 4 twelfths. Okay? All right. So, for this step... Let's focus only on the fractions. Okay? So 7 twelfths subtract 4 twelfths is 3 twelfths. That's our fraction. Focused only on the fractions. Okay? Now let's go back and focus on the whole numbers. 11 subtract 3. 11 subtract 3 is. 8. Okay, so we get a fraction here of 8 and 3 twelfths, but 3 twelfths is not in its lowest form. We can actually divide both the numerator and the denominator by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, 12 divided by 3 is a quarter. 3 twelfths is actually a quarter. So let's rewrite our answer in lowest terms 8 and 1 quarter. Okay, so this is why adding and subtracting is such a kind of a large portion of the fractions unit. It involves all of the steps that we've used up until this point. It kind of puts them all together. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.